it's Ryan Metzler here again, and today we're going to take a look at a two-player game from Alderac Entertainment Group. That game is Pagoda. Uh, now, this is a game in which each player is trying to compete in order to build pagodas on a board. They're cooperating, but competing at the same time. Placing out columns in order to build floors on top of them. On the higher up you build your columns, meaning the higher up you are on a floor, uh, the more points you can get. But your opponents are, of course, going to try and steal those opportunities from you. Building floors instead of the columns will give you special abilities, and there's all types of things to take into consideration. So real quick, why don't we take a look at what you get inside of the box, we'll see how the game plays, and we'll come back here at the end and get my opinions on Pagoda. So here you can see the setup for Pagoda. Now this is a two-player game in which each player starts out in the same scenario. They're going to have an open display of five cards, and they'll get the same five cards, each one of each color, so yellow, red, blue, purple, and green. Uh, and then they're going to get two cards that are secret, and they'll always have a hand of two secret cards that they can play from. This player has two purple, while our other player here has a green and a red. Now on your turn, you can build three pillars. The idea here is that we're building 3D representations of pagodas. Each floor will have four pillars, and then on top of those four pillars will go a floor, in which another four pillars will go until you've got four floors, at which point you may build a roof. So. On your turn, you may build pillars, and in order to do so, you're going to be playing cards from either your hand or your open display. You may build up to three, and each one you build costs you a card. So, for example, this player here could play his green from his hand and the green from over here. You play them vertically to show that you're building pillars, uh, and he would build two green pillars to this empty building over here. These must now all be green on the first floor, and then they'll be covered by a floor which will give them the ability to be built again. And when you look at these, when you build the floor, you have the choice of which of the column colors you would like to be used for the next floor, blue, purple, yellow, red, or green. But we'll get back to that momentarily. This player has built two of his pillars, but could build a third one if he so choose. And maybe he decides to play this red card from his hand right here in order to build a third red pillar. Pillars are worth a number of points equal to the floor that they're built on. So this is built on floor one, one, two, three points, and our player would score three. He would then discard all of the cards that he played and draw up. He's first going to fill his open display with a green, and then he's going to draw two cards to put into his hand, a yellow and a blue. Our next player then has his turn, and he's going to likewise probably build three pillars. So let's say that he decides to build two purple from his hand, maybe right here, playing them or vertically building two pillars, and then he's going to build a third green pillar, or sorry, purple pillar, from his open display, giving him three pillars. Again, worth three points, and he draws back up. One into his open display, and two into his hand. We're now back to the first player, and he has the option of placing the fourth pillar on purple, but he can't build the floor. In order to build a floor, it also costs you one card of the color of the pillars that make the base of that floor. So for example, he would need two purples in order to finish this, but he only has one. So perhaps he decides to start a new building. He plays two yellows over here and a red onto the already existing red floor, putting two yellows and a red pillar out like this. And this, again, is worth three points. So he's going to score one, two, three. I'm going to advance the game state a little bit to show you some of the other options that you can do in the game. We're now back to the blank player's turn, and he has enough purples in order to finish this floor, and that's called building a floor. In addition to building your three pillars that you can build per turn, you can build in any number of floors as long as the previous set of pillars is finished. So, let's say that he plays this purple card here in order to build this last pillar. He may now build the floor by playing another purple card horizontally. So he's going to play this card horizontally, and that lets him build the purple floor. The purple floors, as I showed earlier, have different colors of columns on them, and you may choose which one you would like to play based on what's in your hand, or what you think your opponent can't really contribute to. This player would probably choose the blue pillars, and he would put this on top. Building that floor is worth a victory point as well, each floor worth one, so he's going to get one for the column and one for the floor. In addition, he can still build two columns, ah, but there's a special ability he gets for building a floor. Every time you build a floor, you're going to move the appropriate special ability marker all the way to the right, and this will give you a special ability that you can use twice in the game, or more if you happen to build more floors of the same color, sliding them back over. Some of them will let you draw extra cards during your turn, or some of them will let you use two cards as a wild to build a pillar, or two cards as a wild to build a floor, or even to build four columns on your turn. So, getting these abilities by building floors is going to be worth it. 
But now that he's done this, he's got two points. He's got his special ability of drawing up to four cards. He's going to play two more cards, perhaps both from his open display, to this floor in order to build two more pillars. Now that these pillars are on the second floor, they're worth two points apiece. So he's got one for his column on the first floor, one for the floor, and four more for the two columns on this floor. That's going to give him six points towards his victory. I'm going to advance the game a little bit more to show you what the last option is that you can do on your turn. Okay, I've, sh I've shown one of the pagodas here built up four floors. The first floor was made of purple columns, then a purple floor, then blue columns and a blue floor, and then uh, a green columns and a green floor, and now we have red columns. This is now a four-story tall building, and of course I didn't actually take the turns out here, I've just mocked it up, but if a player had the right cards, they can now build a roof. Now, building a roof has different costs. One, it's going to cost you the horizontal card to build the floor. So we have have to play a horizontal card of the appropriate color, red in this case, in order to build the floor. When we do so, we're going to take that tile and we're going to flip it over. And you'll see that on top here, it has a specific color of column again. Uh, this one is purple, but let's go ahead and see if we can find one that works with our player. Ah, here we go. So he's going to build the red floor with the red top, a red spire on it. And in order to do this, he's actually going to need two more cards in order to build two columns on top of that, which is the formation of a spire. Building a roof is worth five points, no matter what. So building this roof will put two of these columns on top of here, will give you five points for building that, plus one for building the floor, uh, and is also going to uh, basically trigger part of the end game. Three of these being fully built triggers end game, and then you'll score points. So as you see, you're going to build up, try and get points by building columns, try and build all the way up to the top, and build the roofs in order to get some extra points. A note that building these two columns on top for the spire only counts as one of your column builds for the turn. So it's a way to kind of finish something off, utilize some extra cards out of your area, draw new cards, and earn points all at the same time. As I said, you're going to play essentially until you build up three of the pagodas all the way. Uh, and once you do so, you're going to total up your tally of points and see who's the winner. And the player with the most points will be the winner of Pagoda. And there you have it, that is Pagoda, a nice little two-player game from AEG. Uh, I can't say that that my two-player gaming partner, my wife, Andrea, uh, is a fan of the game, but I myself uh, enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, now, the, the fact that you have this kind of combination of open information, you have five open cards, but you have those two secret hidden cards, adds quite a bit of tension to the game. You wouldn't think that uh, two-sevenths of your information being hidden would be a big deal, but it really kind of is. Uh, I mean, maybe I'm showing two yellow cards and I have two more in hand uh, and there's one yellow column. Well, it doesn't look like I'm gonna be able to do anything, but on my turn I can drop three yellow pillars and drop a uh, floor and that all of a sudden gives me the abilities, it gives me points for the pillars or the columns and it gives me a point for the floor. Um, trying to prevent other players from making roofs is kind of an interesting option. They need, of course, a card and then two more cards of a different color or potentially the same color in order to finish that roof, but it's worth five points, so getting that done is, is uh, kind of nice, but if you can stop them from doing so by uh, not contributing to that floor or, or doing it before them, great. Um, so I think it really comes down to, to preferences. It's a very light game. It's definitely not a, a huge brain burner. Uh, you know, you have your five visible cards and your two hand cards, and what you're often going to do is kind of straightforward, but not always. Sometimes it's best to just throw a column onto a random building uh, so you don't advance the board state in a way that your opponent can, can take advantage of it and earn more points than you. So there's definitely some decisions to be made there. Uh, they're not deep or, or hugely strategic decisions, but they're definitely decisions uh, that can alter the way the game goes and give you an advantage if played properly. So uh, I definitely suggest checking it out. As I said, Andrea, not a fan. She didn't like it, uh, but I myself enjoy it quite a bit. Uh, I can't see it staying in our collection for a super long time simply because uh, she doesn't like it, and that's my two-player gaming partner for the most part, but I think that there's definitely a crowd out there who's going to find an elegance to this game. They're going to enjoy it for the light to semi-medium strategy that it, it does offer, uh, and it has a nice tactile or visual appeal in the form of building up those pagodas and getting to see the construction of them out on the board. So if that sounds good to you, check it out. That's Pagoda from AEG and Pegasus Spiel. 
Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock.